What's up YouTube? Before we start, make sure to smash the like button for more fire content. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For all the newcomers, welcome to Team Island. If you haven't yet, be sure to follow Team Island on the IG page. There's a lot of great content on that page and I'm always active so if you have any questions, be sure to DM me. Make sure to like the video if you haven't. And let's get into it. Here are some tips on how to defend a slant route. Remember, when we're defending the slant route, we can't hesitate. We have to go. But if we go with the proper reads and the right angle, attacking the upfield shoulder of the receiver, we'll be fine for any double move. So if we're playing off man, right? We want to line up seven, maybe eight yards, whatever your coach prefer, prefers. But we want to be inside leverage of the receiver. So I'm at seven yards, inside shade of the receiver, with my outside foot up, right? And I'm reading the quarterback for any three-step drops. So now I'm in my stance, to read the quarterback for his three-step drop, right? So as the play goes, I take my three-step reads. Once I realize the ball's coming out quick, I throttle down and I locate the receiver's nearest hip, right? As he breaks, I'm waiting for him to break for the ball for a slant. I want to attack the upfield shoulder of the receiver. As I'm attacking, right? Going to the upfield shoulder just in case he catches it as a tackle quickly. If it's a double move, he has to turn and run right back into me, and we'll be able to play both. All right, top of the screen. Now we're looking at the corner right here. So me as a corner, I will line up a little bit more inside, maybe a yard and a half, just because we want to take away the slant. Looks like this corner is playing a little head up on the receiver. Now we're reading the quarterback as we're taking a read step so we can determine if, it's, if the ball's coming out quickly or not. So read the quarterback. Quarterback's a catch and throw. The arm action, long arm action is up right away. So that means the ball's coming out now, right? So right now, as I take my read step, my eyes go back to the receiver and I'm gonna break towards his upfield shoulder. The reason why we break towards the upfield shoulder is we wanna meet him at a point and we, if just in case he runs a double move, he's gonna run right back into us. If we break on the upfield shoulder, we will just, and he catches it, it's an automatic tackle right there, right? But if we try to beat him at a point and we miss at six, or if we take a bad angle like this DB did, which causes it to be a touchdown. Look at this angle right here. He, first of all, he hesitate. When we break in for a slant, we can't hesitate because we're, we're we're outside, right? We're coming outside in. So we have to really focus on breaking on the upfield shoulder and we can't hesitate. And this is what happens when you hesitate and you take a bad angle to make a tackle. Quarterback catch and throw, right? Take one step, he catch. Ball's up right away. Look at the long arm action now. So you see that long arm action? That's when we put our eyes right back on the receiver. And we're gonna break towards the upfield shoulder. Now let's look at this receiver's break. See how he's leaning back? He's hesitating right now. The receiver's already ahead of us. Just because he hesitated caused that. Once we see that, we break to the upfield shoulder. Everything will be fine from there. If it's a double move, he's going to run right back into us. So this right right here is just knowing the situation and studying your opponent. So right now, we're reading the bottom of the screen. We're reading Stephon Gilmore. He knows it's third and five. He sees the receivers lined at the bottom of the numbers. This is an NFL field, so slightly different. So he's plus two at the bottom of the numbers. So he's expecting an inside route. 
He probably studied his opponent. He's probably realized, realized the formation and understood that this is a high tendency of one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's probably going to be a slant. So if you look at him, he doesn't even look at the receiver when he's breaking. He's looking at the quarterback, see the long arm action, and he's already breaking before the receiver does. But look at where he breaks at. He's breaking to the top field shoulder of the receiver. But he had a, such a great break that he ends up beating the receiver there. But he ran through and made collision with the receiver. Granted, it could have been probably help over top, so he probably was very aggressive. But just knowing the situation and everything going on, this is a great play. So when you play in press, you want to break it down, play half the man or receiver, right? So when I say half man, you want to split them in half, you want to line up inside leverage of the receiver. So I'm reading the nearest hip of the receiver, right? Now, if he gives me an outside release, I want to meet him at a point, so I'm kick sliding, right? Keep going, right here. And now if he comes back, he's going to come back right back into me, right? Now, if he gives me an inside release and he beats me inside, now I'm playing the upfield shoulder, right? And I'm leaning him, pushing him back to the line of scrimmage as I'm running towards the ball to the upfield shoulder. And I want to play the ball through the receiver's hands. Now, when we're playing press, against a receiver we want to take be as close as receiver as possible so we're going to ask the ref hey we good we good as we ask we're moving on up because that's too much space especially for a great receiver like mike evans right so now we're doing that and we're playing half the man right we want to focus on half the man so we're reading the nearest hip of the receiver and take away the inside shade right here looks like Malcolm Butler gives him a free release he opens the gate right away and then he doesn't even put his hands on him but he looks like he's expecting an in route so he's playing inside shuffling now his body's completely turned sideways so if it's a fade or anything outside he's beat but he's still in great position although this whole technique is wrong but he falls for that move right there See, if he had his hand on him and he was meeting him at a 45 degree angle, he would have been a perfect position to play both because he's inside already with his inside hand on, his outs on the receiver's inside shoulder, right? And he's meeting him at a point with a 45 degree angle. But instead, he's com turned completely sideways. His hand, he, he puts no hands on the receiver and he just gives him a free release. Opens the gate, but he still falls for the outside move coming back inside which causes this to happen so let's just talk about the alignment first of all he's inside shade the receiver reading the nearest hip of the receiver right let's rewind this eyes are looked in at the nearest hip of the receiver inside shade of receiver watch how he stays square and doesn't open the gate right stay square doesn't open the gate get hands on the receiver he starts to go kick slide 45 but he realizes the receiver is coming back inside so he stays square and react and come down and force the receiver to flatten his route and then he locates the ball and play the ball through the receiver's hand this is a great ref right here if you add these tips to your game, you'll be able to stop the slant route the right way.